I'm Lily Part here for Tailored Expressions, and in today's video I'm sharing projects using three of the 12 stencils from the new stencil release. We're all about stencils this month, and there's another reason why. Tailored Expressions has just released a set of five pastel blender brushes. These are exactly like the original set, but now you have more color options. In fact, I felt like I needed extra brushes for lighter colors, so I'm so happy to have these. Plus, there's an adorable space-saving tool tray that not only holds the new brushes, but you can also use it for writing utensils and other crafty tools like scissors and water brushes. The soft rubbery slots of various sizes will hold just about anything. The first stencil I'll be using is the Falling Happy stencil. I fell in love with this one the moment I saw it. I love that there's a full happy at the top and then the letters seem to disintegrate or disappear and scatter towards the bottom of the stencil. The second stencil I'll be using is the Play the Angle stencil and I love the uniqueness of this design. I seem to lean towards asymmetrical designs, and I love that open space where you can fit an image or sentiment. Finally, I'll be using a new leaf, and this one is so beautiful and perfect for this time of year. You can use it with so many colors and create so many patterns with it. You can't go wrong with any of these stencils. In addition to the stenciling, I'll be using a few different stamp and die combos. The first one is Simply Smitten. I just love this cute little bear and his fall accessories. I'll also be using the On the Block Happy and Building Block Happy Editions, which coordinates with On the Block Happy. Let's get started on my projects. For the first card, I'm going to stamp the bear, pumpkins, and two of the hanging vines. Since I'm using the Mini Misty stamping tool, I can stamp everything twice using Oreo ink. Normally, I would just turn my panel and stamp it again, but these take up just over half the panel, so I'm just stamping the images on two different panels. Now I'm ready to color the images with Copic markers. The Tailored Expressions color chart provides Copic colors that match their inks, so I choose colors that match the inks I plan to use on the stencils. If you're interested in using the same colors, I'll have them listed in the supply list below. I'm going to put on some music and speed through the coloring process. After the images are colored and die cut, I'll quickly show you my mock-ups for each stencil. On the Play the Angle stencil, I'll be using the hanging vines together with the On the Block Happy across the center of the vines where they meet. Then I'll be using the On the Block Happy with a Happy Edition sentiment on the new leaf stencil. The Bear and Pumpkins will go on the Falling Happy stencil. After securing my sugar cube panel on my cutting mat and centering the stencil on top, I select my inks to represent fall leaf colors. I'll start with potato chip, the lightest color at the bottom, then move to pineapple, which is a richer yellow, then I switch to candy corn, and finish with pumpkin. I love how these four colors look on their own, as well as the way they transition into one another to create an ombre effect with the falling happy stencil. Next up is a new leaf. I've chosen two trios, one green and one blue, so I can alternate the colors between rows. I have three shades of each color, so I can create an ombre effect within the individual leaves and rows. Just like the Falling Happy stencil, my darkest shades will be at the top and run lighter towards the bottom. The green colors are Lime Zest, Pea Pod, and Cilantro. The blue colors are Confetti Cake, Blue Raspberry, and Poblano Pepper. Ooh, isn't this gorgeous? With the Play the Angle stencil, I'll be using it in combination with the Rectangle Masking stencil since I want to leave a white border around the panel. For this stencil, I'm using the same three greens as on the previous stencil, and I'm going to use the colors in reverse order, so the top of the card will have the lightest green, lime zest, and I'll create a diagonal ombre with pea pod and cilantro. I gently wipe the top of the stencil so the texture paste won't pick up the ink on top of the stencils. This is transparent matte texture paste, so the ink color will show through the paste. It will just add a tiny bit of shine and, of course, a cool texture when dry. I use a palette knife to apply the paste across the stencil, scraping it right across the top to make it perfectly even. 
Then I set it aside to dry for a couple of hours. Isn't it cool? I love using paste, but I'm so impatient with the drying process, and I think that stops me from using it a lot more. I stamped the building block's happy additions on pineapple cardstock and die cut them using the coordinating die. Then I placed the Thanksgiving strip on the card so the sentiment ties into the stencil and reads, Happy, happy, happy Thanksgiving. For the second card, I won't be using any images and let the sentiment and the stencil shine. I'm going to stamp on the block happy on Peapod cardstock with sugar cube pigment ink and heat emboss it with clear sparkle embossing powder. I heat set it, re-stamp it, and heat set it a second time. I just love watching the powder melt. It's so super sparkly and makes the word really special, especially after it's die cut. I use the die cut to cut out just the coordinating die from Poblano Pepper cardstock to place it behind the heat embossed one as a shadow and to make it stand out against the busy stenciled background. For the second part of this sentiment, I heat emboss the happy additions onto Oreo cardstock and use You Make Me So to complete the sentiment. Moving on to the last card, I'm once again heat embossing the On the Block Happy stamp, this time in white on truffle cardstock. Now it's time to assemble all the cards. I ended up swapping out the pineapple sentiment for the truffle one and adhered it to a black strip to provide emphasis and separate it from the images and also to allow it to pop against the stenciled background. For the second card, I adhered the heat embossed layer to its shadow trimmed down the panel by a quarter inch and attached it to a sugar cube card base. This is simple but so gorgeous. For my last card, I attached the two hanging vines to form a frame. Then I applied sticky circles and sticky strips to both the frame and the heat embossed happy die. I had the toughest time deciding how to finish this card and tried so many different colors with the sentiment strips, but finally decided to finish it with the word B on Peapod cardstock and tuck it right there on the left above the die cut. Now all my cards are done. What do you think of these stencils? Please leave a comment below to let me know which one is your favorite. You can find all of these products in the Tailored Expressions web store at tailoredexpressions.com. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you again soon.